Hallelujah. Just greet them in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you love him tonight, let's just lift him just for a second. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift him. Let's lift him. Ha! Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you on tonight. Welcome. Uh, Thursday night teaching, uh, pastoral teaching. We're happy to be here, happy to be in the land of the living. Uh, I'm starting to understand more and more what some of the old saints say. It's better to be seen and not viewed. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I thank God for Jesus on tonight. We have a word from the Lord on tonight, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 is where we want to begin uh, reading. 1 Peter chapter 5. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 5. I'm going to read 8, 9, 10, and 11 uh, for our discussion tonight. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8, 9, 10, and 11. Are you all ready? The Bible declares, <laughs> be spiritually sober. <laughs> be spiritually sober. Be alert. Your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, is prowling around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him by standing firm in the faith, knowing that the same ordeals of suffering are being placed upon your brothers throughout the world. But after you have Suffered for a little while. Oh, God. The Lord of all grace, who have called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will personally restore you, support you, strengthen you, and establish you. <laughs> then... Uh, you got to give him praise. To him belongs the dominion forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Lord, help us tonight. <laughs> uh, it's my endeavor tonight to try to uh, help you push. Um, not necessarily... Uh, speaking of levels or dimensions, uh, but just speaking uh, your now and your next. Uh, your now and your next. Uh, you have to deal with your now in order to even uh, try to comprehend your next. Uh, but uh, the greatest challenge is to understand that uh, you are going to be mentally challenged and overwhelmed uh, in order to get to your next. Stretch does not come uh, without overwhelming. Uh, in other words, uh, you are going to face some extreme uh, trying times, uh, some being the devil, some God permitted, if that makes sense. Uh, God's permissive will and God's perfect will are two different things. Uh, uh, God, God allows things uh, to happen uh, that are not necessarily in his perfect will, 
uh, they're in his permissive will. But because uh, we desire a thing, uh, he allows it uh, so that we can get to his perfect will. I always talk about the woman that begged God for a house, and it wasn't her season to have a house. Uh, and she kept begging God and begging God. Finally, God said, fine, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, and after she had it a while, uh, the roof started leaking, plumbing started going crazy. A uh, septic tank started bubbling up in the backyard. Uh, and then she went back to God and said, God, uh, what's up? You blessed me with this house, and, and now it's falling apart. And God said, no, I allowed you to get this house. Uh, and many a times we're mistaking what God allows for his blessings. Uh, God's perfect will, he told her, I have a house for you, but this wasn't it. And sometimes we move out of season. Uh, I heard something yesterday uh, that said sometimes we try to stay in a season too long. Uh, and, and we try to stay in that season, and the longer we stay there, that season spoils uh, because we were supposed to move to the next season. Uh, the problem is, is that, uh, that many of us, uh, we, we like spring because uh, spring represents growth. It represents newness. It represents fresh. Uh, sometimes we like summer as long as it don't get too hot. Uh, we be feeling ourselves in summer, praise the Lord. Uh, I ain't going to deal with that too much, hallelujah. But then when fall comes, we don't, we don't deal with fall. Fall is beautiful. We like to look at the leaves falling off the trees. But what about your fall? <laughs> what happens when things start falling out of your life? Lord, help us, help us. Uh, because, you know, uh, what God a lot of times is trying to do in us, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to drag things and people and stuff with us, and we don't realize that they're going kicking and screaming uh, because they're not trying to elevate to the places that you're trying to go. I don't know about you, uh, but at the end of the day, realistically, all I want to do is please the Lord. Realistically, uh, I think I've, I've outgrown a lot of the areas in my life where, you know, we, we feel that we haven't arrived until we have acquired certain things. Yes, yeah, stuff come and go. Uh, and I've gotten to the place now where my dreams have changed. I, I, don't, I, don't, know, I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, my dreams have changed. You know, uh, many of us had dream cars dream houses. Now, you know what my dreams are? My, my dream now is just to be in the peace of God. I, <laughs> my, my dream now is to have a day, have a day that I don't deal with immense amount of stress. Y'all ain't in here. I, just to be in the presence of God. Those are my dreams now. Those, those are my dreams to have, to have a day uh, that, that I'm captivated in his worship. <laughs> Just, just to be moved by God, moved by his presence, to lay at his feet. Uh, my dreams have changed. It's nice to have stuff, but, but uh, the realistic thing is to be spiritually sober. This is, this is where, where transition takes place, that, that you move from a carnal mind to a spiritual mind because, because being spiritually sober uh, uh, means that, that you're not easily moved, that, that, that you recognize what's coming up against you, that, that you're not always jumpy. Uh, you, know, you know, we have too many saints that are jumpy. You're just ready to jump. <laughs> you on 10, you on go all the time. Uh, uh, your, your mouth is, is not biblical. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Y'all ain't in here. Uh, uh, the Bible says, be slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to wrath. Because sometimes you need to hear and, instead of being responsive. Uh, Christians aren't, aren't, aren't the ones that are always uh, trying to jump because you think somebody trying to play you. They are trying to play you. 
And it's your response that God is looking at. But you're still trying to be a player. Y'all, y'all catch what I'm saying. Uh, we, if we're going we to be godly, then we can't be ghetto. We can't be both. We can't be both. You can't be hood and be holy. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It, it, it don't work. It don't work. Trust me, I know. It don't work. You know, at, at some point, you're going to have to let the rules change. You know, because in the ghetto, we have rules. A am I right about it? And, and, and so when we come to God, the rules have to change. Because if you're going to be spiritually sober, then you cannot be carnally driven. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to slow down. You, you got to slow down. No, look at him and be serious. Tell him, you got to slow down. You got to slow down. Being spiritually sober uh, uh, has to take a moment to look and examine. Uh, so uh, some of the questions that you examine, I, I just want to help you through this thought process especially if you're writing, uh, some of the questions that, that you have to ask yourself uh, when situations, circumstances arise, number one, why is God allowing this? Why is God allowing this? It's not that I'm angry with God uh, because I, I don't understand in its totality, what God is doing. So I don't have a mind to be angry with God uh, because I'm in remembrance of what I've asked God for. Now, I understand that I don't have God's infinite wisdom. So the things that I've asked God for, I realize that there's a process not only for me to obtain it, but to keep it. Uh, because you can't get godly promises and then destroy them you have to keep them and so God has to allow processes to take place in my life and in my mind so that I can get to the promise and then maintain the promise you know we say stuff like well my father is rich and houses and land yeah but you not and so uh, daddy has it and he wants to give it, but we've got to put, be positioned to be able to handle it. And, it. and it's a spiritual soberness that God is looking for in order to be able to place us in places that we don't even deserve. He wants to put us there, but we have to experience the process to develop the character to be able to handle what he wants to give us uh, look at your name and say spiritually sober spiritually yeah spiritually sober deals with how you deal with the thing what's your posture when you're dealing with it yes how how do you how how do you handle the going through what's your posture in in handling it uh because uh, you know, we are built with emotions. And so when he says things like be angry and sin not, uh, you have to know your limit in the anger. Uh, because, you know, anger driven the wrong way develops sin. Uh, it, it starts in a thought process, and then the thought process, intellect, emotion, action, is how the body functions. And so we see it, we feel it, then we do it. And so what happens is where do you capture spiritual soundness? Uh, because, you know, one thing that I've learned is that fools are going to be fools. Y'all. That's, that's my Aunt Izzy right there. You know, that goes way back. Fools will be fools. And you can't, you can't allow a fool to make you do foolish stuff. Because then the fool has pulled you into his foolish world. Are, are you with me? You can't let a clown cause you to start clowning. Uh, because then he's pulled you into his clownish world. Whatever it is that's pulling at you, you've got to step back and ask the first question, God, why are you allowing this to happen? I, I, I've gotten to the place 
I, where I ask that question, the second question I ask is, God, what are you trying to teach me? Can you just tell me the lesson? Because I don't want to go through this foolishness. Uh, can, can you just script it out for me? And God says, no, because in, in watch this, in learning lessons, it's not just the intellect that God wants you to get. God wants you to understand the intellect, the emotions, and then make a choice. He wants you to understand the intellect, the emotions, and then make a choice. What, what am I saying? Oh, my God. This is rough on me tonight. It's, it's the understanding of it. But you can have the understanding but still don't have the compassion. That makes sense. Uh, you, you don't know what it's like until you experience it, right? And then when you experience it, not only do you have the knowledge, but you have the emotion behind it. You don't know until you go through it. Then when you go through it, now you have calculated emotions. Because sometimes we experience stuff that we never experienced before, and we don't know what to do. Your emotions are, are, are top side. They're going left, right. They're going backwards. They're going forwards. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to respond. And then in this age of technology, if you're not careful, stuff will start sending you in your windows, and you done gone crazy. Can I help you? When you're going through, the best thing for you to do is turn that phone off. Man, turn that iPad off. Do not go on Facebook. Because you're going to find something on Facebook, and you're going to think somebody talking about you or somebody saying something. And now, in your emotions, you're going to fool around and respond and then build another situation when you should have just be still. Look at your neighbor real quick and say, just be still sometime. And furthermore, in your being still, be quiet. You ain't got to tell everybody your situation. You know, I think technology has messed up some folks. Because you get on Facebook and you tell the devil all your business. And then you wonder why he come at you the way that he do. Don't get messed up with this stuff. God, listen, listen, I don't think there's going to be no Facebook in heaven. I'm pretty sure of it. I'm pretty sure when you get to the gate, they're not going to have no scanners to check you in. I'm pretty sure because God in his infinite wisdom knows what's up. Learn. Can I give you the next point? Learn how to disconnect. Oh. If you want to hear from God, you're going to have to disconnect. You're going to have to learn how to shut it down. We've gotten so comfortable. I mean, everything is shifting. You know, you don't have the big cable boxes anymore. Y'all remember when they used to sit on the floor model TV? I know that's before some of y'all time. Where we changed the channel with pliers, y'all ain't in here. Where you had an antenna with foil on it. Or you be in the other room and your, your parent call you in the room. You be like, hey, what's happening? Change the channel. <laughs> Change the channel. And don't miss. Because <laughs> then you got to go all. <laughs> Lord, we got it too easy. We have remote controls for everything. Uh, now you don't even have to push the button on the remote. You can talk to the remote. I, I, I saw that the other day. They was talking to the TV. I said, now this is getting scary. Praise the Lord. Uh, the new phone, you can tell Siri whatever you want Siri to do. Call this person and put them on speakerphone. I tried it, you know. I tried it. Praise the Lord. And, it, and the machine did it. We got to learn how to disconnect. I asked Siri what denomination she was the other day. <laughs> she responded. I ain't going to tell you what she said. <laughs> uh, 
Look at your neighbor and say, learn how to disconnect. If you're going to be, hear me, if you're going to be spiritually sober, you need to learn how to disconnect. Uh, I don't care if you're at work or at home, uh, but you need to leave that thing in another room. And, and, and I'm telling you, cut it off. Because your mind has been trained to technology and we're getting away from God. I, I love technology, but you got to disconnect because we got access to people too fast. I remember when we used to have to go home to make a phone call. <laughs> uh, we had an answer machine, not voicemail. You know, you had to play the tape. Hallelujah. Put your ear to it. <laughs> uh, we're in a connected society. And because we're in a connected society, we don't know how to disconnect long enough to hear from God. Uh, uh, God is jealous. Uh, and God will get your attention any way he can. Um, if he causes you to drop your thousand dollar phone. In the toilet, he'll get your attention. Uh, <laughs> see, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about if you hadn't experienced it. But you've been through those emotions. I can hear some of y'all. Uh, dropped it in water, spilled coffee on it, whatever. Uh, you've been through those emotions. And, and because you have the knowledge of it and you feel it, now you protect that thing a little bit better. Uh, but you had to go through it to develop a process of protecting something that you paid for. Are y'all in here? And, and, and so what I'm, what I'm saying is, is when you become spiritually sober, you have to protect it. You have to learn to disconnect. You have to know uh, that God desires your time, that, that God is the best teacher, that, that God can give you answers that Google can't, that that God uh, will speak to you uh, in the depths of your soul uh, and deal with issues that you two can't walk you through. Uh, there's not an app for the stuff that we be going through. Praise the Lord. Uh, but you can get a direct download from God, but you got to be still. You got to disconnect. You got to be quiet. You got to hear from God. You got to spend time with God. Being spiritually sober uh, deals with the fact that you hear God speaking. Uh, you ever talk to an individual and, and you give them what thus saith the Lord, and the first thing that come out of their mouth is but? Yeah, but. Uh, they have an excuse for everything. It's because they really don't want an answer. What they really want is for you to feel the way that they feel. And so they're no different than the fool or the clown because they're trying to pull you into their world to get your emotions off balance and to have you angry and mad at people that, that you shouldn't be mad at because of their situation. But when you're sober, you're able to stand in the middle of whatever's going on and, and be an intercessor. The Bible declares, watch this, the Bible declares, Blessed is the peacemaker. Oh, I'm understanding that thing now because, because, you know, it's easy to pick sides. It's easy, you know, to, to jump on one side or the other or to declare who's right or who's wrong. But to be sober, whoo, to be sober is, is to not necessarily go after uh, the fault or, or the wrong. It is to to always try to gravitate to the spirit of unity. Yeah, it's, it's, to, it's to, to solve uh, disputes. It's to, to bring the body together. It's to, it's to cause things to be at peace. Uh, but the problem is, watch this. Oh, God help me. The problem is, is when your mind and your spirit are at alt with one another, what do you do? 
when your mind and your spirit are in art with one another, what do you what do you do? Uh, your mind is made up of that e intellect, emotion, and will. Your your spirit is made up of who you yield yourself to. The problem is is that the, if the mind doesn't submit to the spirit. <laughs> Uh, then uh, your flesh takes over and gives itself to the devil. Did you catch that? And so how do we get to the place where we become sober-minded and in turn be spiritually sober? Sober-minded deals uh, with the ability to be able to hang on to your character. You got, listen, listen, this, this, this warfare tonight, you, you got to know how to hang on to your character. You got to know how to hang on to it. Uh, if you got to take deep breaths, you, you got to know how to hang on to your character. Something's got to change. Nudge your neighbor and say something's got to change. You know, we talk about change too much, but then we stay in the same attitudes and we stay in the same mindsets and we, we have the same conversations and what's really changing? Nothing's changing. You just have the knowledge of. And so we bring the scripture to pass having <laughs> the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. It's it's not good when it's power to help somebody else change. That's not good power. That's not good power. The good power is when you have the ability to make a decision that changes your life. That's real power. And so it's difficult to speak into somebody else's life and you ain't worked it in your own. Are you holding your character? Help me, Lord. Are you holding your character? Are you holding it? Are you holding it? The character that God wants you to demonstrate now is the fruit of the Spirit. Love, peace, joy, longs. Mm. Long suffering. <laughs> Woo! Uh, are you holding your character? It, it's It's... It's interesting that the believer can articulate the text, that, that we have theologians in the church that, that can tell you uh, the hermeneutical understanding and the Greek revelation, but you can't walk it in your own life. Well, the Bible's telling us to be sober uh, simply means we need to sit back sometime and really evaluate the situation before we open our mouths. We're quick to speak. We're slow to listen. And wrath chases us uh, because we won't sit back sometime and guard and govern what God is trying to cultivate in us. Maybe I'm by myself tonight, but God has been working on me. And when he develops in me what he wants me to have, I am in a mind to fight to keep what he's done in my life. I'm beginning to understand what the Bible says. I've had a lot of physical fights. But here in the last month, I've been fighting the good fight of faith. It's different. It's different. Because you have to believe what God told you. <laughs> I, I, all right, all right. That maybe that was just, and maybe it was too deep or too simple for some. But but you've got to believe what God has told you. You've got to believe it because if you don't believe it, you'll walk away from it. You got to go back. You, and that's why I encourage people to write notes and to keep journals and to and to log stuff with dates and times and who said it, what what where was the sun when when you said it, you know, uh, what did you have on? You need all these vivid memories to remind you what God said. So when you get in the situation, you can believe what He said. This is just the process of getting there. 
Uh, being sober, being spiritually sober means so much. It is the response that God is looking for. Ask your neighbor, do you know how to be quiet? Oh, that's a rough question to ask. Yes, yes, yes. No, look at you. Because prophetically, prophetically, you don't even know if you know how to be quiet. You don't know if you know how to work being quiet in your own. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> oh, God. Look at somebody tell them I'm going to have to walk it out. I'm going to. So our prayers, help me, Holy Ghost, our prayers ought to change. Our prayers uh, ought to be uh, uh, to the Lord, uh, Lord, keep my mouth. Keep, keep my mouth. I'm going to just work with mouth. I'm going to get to hands. I hear you. Uh, but Lord, keep my mouth. Why? I feel the Holy Ghost now. Keep my mouth because uh, the Bible talks about how can bitter and sweet come out of the same fountain, right? How can blessing and cursing, uh, that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so if I work on my mouth, then, then I can begin to speak things into existence and my hands and my feet have to line up with what my mouth is saying because my mouth says what I believe. Uh, you know, uh, it's interesting uh, because I always tried to figure out why people tell lies. As saints of God, I figured it out, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to say it, raise offering, and go home. People tell lies because they believe them. Uh, Y'all ought to catch what I'm saying. Y'all ought to catch what I'm saying. I, they, people tell lies because they believe them. The Lord gave me revelation. I, I said, God, what is going on here? You cannot. And, and this is what I was telling God. I answered my own prayer. God, you, can, you cannot tell me that this person actually believes what just came out. Nobody, watch this, nobody in their right mind. No, no, if y'all ain't catching what I'm saying, you're going to miss this whole Bible study. Nobody in their right mind could believe what just came out of your mouth. And God said, you're right. Did you hear what you said? Right mind. <laughs> Woo! God delivered me right there. I said, oh, cuckoo for Cocoa Puss. Okay, all right. Uh, because... Because in order to have a right mind, the Bible says what? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, God had to check me because he said, why are you trying to hold people that don't know Jesus to Jesus' standards? You getting mad with folk. Because you're trying to hold them to the standards of the Lord, but they don't know him. <laughs> and so we get frustrated because why did you lie to me? Well, what was you supposed to do? Because to you, it's the truth. I'm trying to free somebody in here. Because I, I plan to get a good night's sleep tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, to them, it's the truth. It is what they believe. It is not until you change your belief system that, that you actually begin to change. It wasn't until God changed my belief system that I actually began to change. I had to change what I believe. That's why, you know, the old saints, a lot of them couldn't even read. They didn't have good educations, but, but they said stuff that made so much sense, and we took it for granted. But the Bible said, whose report <laughs> will you believe? 
Songs were created behind it. We shall believe the report of the Lord. Uh, what is your belief system? Because here, here we go. Uh, your belief system uh, can stop you from being spiritually sober. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're going to be uneasy uh, and, until some things change in your mind about yourself. I'm not talking about nobody else. I'm talking about what you believe about you. God is not going to allow you uh, to rest easy until you change what you believe about you. Yeah. Yeah, God is going to allow things uh, to be shaken up in your life until you change what you believe about you. You know, uh, some things really had to shift in my mind because I had to try to figure out out of all the people in the world and all the stuff that I've done, why did he come to solitary confinement to come get me? What was it about me that he came to get me? It necessarily wasn't me. It was the destiny. It was the plan that he had for me. It was his plan, his perfect will, right? Because when I was in the world, I was operating in his, per oh, y'all got it now, uh, in his permissive will. He allowed some things so that I could get to a place where the only thing I could do was talk to him. I had, I had to first change what I believe about him. Because when I change what I believe about him, then it changed what I believe about me. Because it would make no sense. Watch this now. It would make no sense to say greater is he. If I haven't changed what I think about him. We would be two defeated individuals. Are, are y'all with me? But I, I had to understand Number one, I serve a big God. I serve a big God. I, I serve a big God. Because I, I had to change my belief because I was mad with God. I was mad with God in relation to his permissive will. You know, they ask these questions. If God is such a loving God, why does he let babies die? If God is such a loving God, you know, why is there homelessness? Listen, all that stuff falls under his permissive will. Because if a homeless person, help me, Holy Ghost, if a homeless person would have the same experience that the prodigal child had. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? At, at some point, you got to come to yourself. What does coming to yourself mean? Mean that, that you're coming back to your mind. He, he said to himself, the servants... Lord, help us. In my father's house are eating better than I am. If I could just go back, he said something. If I could just, uh, uh, all right. If I could just, because I, I tried to rationalize in my own mind. God forbid that circumstances hit me in such a way that I end up outdoors. I tried to rationalize with the thinking of an individual that 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 just can't seem to get back on your feet. And, and I began to think to myself, well, what would I do if I was out here? Uh, my thought, I can't be out here too long. I, I, I understand that it was permitted, but I, I think I'm going to have to do everything possible to be able to get back. And I may not get back to where I was, but I got to get out of the condition that I'm in. God forbid that it happened. But what would I do? I'd wash my clothes at the river every day because I got to hit some job interviews. I got to get out of here. You cannot. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. You cannot allow the devil to take your mind to an all-time low. 
an all-time low to the point that you feel less of yourself. Now, I'm not saying that about homeless folk because some of those folk choose to be homeless. They, they choose to be out there. They want to live off the grid, whatever the case may be. I'm just talking if that had happened to me, my mind would be at some point I've got to get back. Now, uh, the first thing that I want you to talk about getting back to is getting back to God. Now, at one point in your life, you had a prayer life. You wouldn't be sitting here right now if you didn't have, at one point, a deep, intimate prayer life with God. At some point in your life, you talk to God more than you talk to God right now. And, and life, life, whatever it is, job, kids, school, whatever, uh, obligations have slowed uh, your prayer life down. Uh, in, in relation to getting to the feet of Jesus, uh, getting to the place where you get lost in his presence. I'm convinced, I'm convinced that if we spent more time with God, we'd be less stressed out. If we spent more time with God, we'd be a little more healthier. Because I don't know about you, after spending time with God, I, I, I really can't eat. Uh, it's a little difficult for me, you know, to consume, and then I can't consume a whole lot, you know. And so I, I've noticed different things in, in relation to the relationship of God and, and our everyday activity and how we drift from God and how we get connected to stuff and how we get, you know, just kind of sucked into things. And, and God begins to decrease. Uh, and the ticket is because we have such quick access to things, we think we're plugged into God. It's not good enough to listen to somebody else's prayer on YouTube. Although it might move you, uh, uh, it's not good enough just to listen to that prayer. That prayer ought to take you into your own. Are, are y'all with me? It's not just good enough, uh, you know, uh, to listen to somebody on the prayer line. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think the prayer line is great, but the prayer line ought to help you develop a direct line to God. Are y'all in here? And, and, and so we have to learn at some point that if we're going to be sober, we have to figure out what has been, what has been taking our time, what has grabbed our attention to the point that we can't get to the feet of Jesus, and now we breaking out because we stressed out, our hair's falling out, uh, we getting fat for no reason, y'all ain't saying amen, and I believe it's because y'all ain't going to talk to me, all right. All right, I'm talking about myself. It's because we've gotten so disconnected from God uh, that, that we don't take everything to the Lord in prayer. No, we've been taking it to Facebook. We've been, you know, taking it to, to the cell phone. You know, we've been taking it to our so-called prayer partner. Y'all ain't prayer partners. Y'all gossip partners. You know, we, we, we got to get to the place where we got a direct line. You know, we need to stop talking in the name of prayer. That, that's foolishness. That's foolishness. If we're going to pray, let's pray. Hallelujah. You don't need all the information to pray. Hallelujah. I know evangelists going to the hospitals, they don't be asking, oh, what's wrong with you? They walk in the room and declare divine healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I tell you what, you go to a morgue and you ask them what's wrong. <laughs> you go to the morgue and you ask them what's wrong. See if you get a response. Watch this. So, so why, why would, do you go to folk that are spiritually dead and try to get a synopsis of what's wrong? You are without Christ. And so what happens is it, we need to resurrect Jesus or the conversation is for not in the first place. How many dead people have you talked to today? <laughs> yo, yo, 
Y'all, I'm being real comical, but I'm being real for real. You have your dwellings among dead people. And you wonder why circumstance and situation in your surroundings sometimes really get to you. It's because most of the time we're surrounded by dead folks. It's a no wonder you get agitated because if you like me, I don't like that smell. Hallelujah. I got to go to mortuaries all the time. I've been there several times in the last week. And when I walk in, that smell is just like, mm, are you ready? That's the first thing that, that when I walk into the morgue, uh, are, are you ready? I'll be repenting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, the devil, the devil, let me. Let me go there. I, I really wanted to deal with your mind more than I wanted to deal with the devil. Uh, but let's, let's di digest the text just for a minute. I got uh, about 10 minutes. Uh, be spiritually sober. I think we got that. Uh, be alert. Uh, look at your neighbor and tell them, pay attention. You need to stop being so lackadaisical. Uh, you know what spirit irritates me? Uh, a spirit that irritates me is a spirit that is lack of detail. That it, it, it vexes me. Or, or they call it the nonchalant. Does that make sense? Woo! That thing gets to me it, like it's not a big deal. Uh, and I, I think that's what, what the Lord has been working on because I've been around a lot of nonchalant people. And, and if I wasn't alert, I probably would have snatched nonchalant. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Because uh, I'm like, okay, am I the only one that's taking this serious? And then the Lord says, back up, consider what you're dealing with. Uh, I said, you know, you, you're dealing with zombies. You're dealing with dead folks. They are without Christ in their lives. And so, yeah, they're nonchalant because they don't have the heart of God. You're, walk, whoo, you're walking around with the heart of God trying to deal with hard-hearted people. I, 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 I'm trying to help you. You're walking around with the heart of God trying to help hard-hearted people. And it's only the power of the Holy Ghost, the strength of his word, and, and the love of God that can massage a hard heart. To, but the goal is not to get them to accept you. Sometimes we spend so much time trying to develop relationships and God is saying, what about me? I put this stony heart here so that they could get a relationship with me. You are just the vehicle. And so when you get to that point, you get out of the way and let God do what he's going to do. Be alert. Somebody say pay attention. I think one of the reasons why you may not have excelled to the next level that God would have you to excel is because you're not paying attention on the level that you are. And you can't go to the next one because there are some details on this level that you haven't paid attention to yet. And God wants you to look around and see what's happening and deal with those things. You cannot leave no stone unturned because what happens is if you go to the next level with a stone unturned, it, 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 it weakens your foundation. Because it's something that's not dealt with. And so what happens is you're going up, you're going up, you're going up. But you got unresolved things that are down there. Sooner or later, they're going to shake the very foundation of what you're doing. There are relationships that need to be dealt with. There's people that need to be dealt with. There's emotions that need to be dealt with. And if you don't deal with that stuff, you're going to be exposed on a greater level. And so what happens, you know, I, I've been there. I've been there. There were some people uh, that I didn't deal with, and then I got a position, and then I had to deal with them. And the exposure was going to be great, but God said, this is what I want you to do. He said, I don't want you to accept it until you deal with this. 
And because of my integrity, I, I dealt with the issue. And then I went to the individual that offered the position. And I told them the reason why I told you to wait was because of something that I had to deal with. Now, if you still want to offer it to me, that's fine. Because I said all that, the individual said, you know, I was getting ready to retract it. But I didn't know you dealt with that. I said, well, I couldn't walk into this with that. It has shook the very foundation of what I was trying to do. They said, well, how'd it go? You can call them yourself <laughs> and find out. Praise the Lord. Uh, pay attention. Uh, your adversary, and it's defining who your adversary is very clearly, the devil. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not you. And, and then it, it gives his resume. I'm not going to have time to deal with it, but it gives his resume. Uh, the devil, like a roaring lion, like a, like a roaring lion. He makes a lot of noise. Uh, why do you think uh, many a times I'm praying for individuals or I'm praying publicly and I say, God, silence the noise. Because I need to silence the adversary. Because he's making a lot of noise in your mind. And he's, he's making noise because he doesn't want you to hear the voice of God. Because God is a still, soft voice. And the roaring lion is trying to drown out the voice of God so that you don't hear God. Silence the noise. That's why I say disconnect. That's why I say unplug. Because you need to bring the noise down. You need to bring your thoughts down. You need, that's why the Bible tells you to meditate. Because if you don't meditate on his word day and night, you're going to meditate on strongholds that are going to grab your mind. Anything you think about too long is a stronghold. And you're going to think about that thing too long, and now it's going to captivate space, and it's going to have you feeling and thinking a certain way. Hallelujah. I never understood. You know, I get in trouble uh, when I was little, and, you know, I, I just wanted Mama to come and give me my whooping or my punishment or whatever and give it to me quick. Hallelujah. God want this to be over. And I could never understand why she would delay. Are you going to give me my punishment? I'll give it to you when I get ready. And send me back to my room. And, and then she would say uh, the most aggravating words. Go think about. <laughs> oh, y'all heard that. <laughs> Go think about what you've done. That is what the enemy wants to divulge in your mind. Wants you to go and ah, so that it can take over. So that it can, it can pull you in emotionally. Remember that fool? Remember that clown? He's the biggest one of all of them. He wants to pull you in. He, he wants you contemplating. He wants you to think about the situation over and over and over again. He, he, he wants you to, 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 to evaluate it and, and, and spell it all out on the table and get you to go over every deep for what? For what? To torment you, to get your emotions out of whack, uh, to pull you in a place of depression, to get you in a place of frustration, uh, to have anxiety take over. Uh, that, that's how he works in us. That's why the Bible said, uh, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, think on those things that are above. He, he tries to shift our thinking. Uh, so that the enemy does not have an opportunity to captivate our minds. Now, when Corinthians, I'm not going to have time. When Corinthians tells us uh, to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, it's telling us to bring the thought in to captivity to the obedience of Christ. That's telling us that not only do we have to bring the thought in, but there's some other stuff that we got to do. Because if it's obedient to Christ, you know, if it's obedient to Christ, 
uh, we have to get to a place where we turn it over to God and give him praise. It's the process. Turn it over to God and give him praise. What is it? Cast your cares. Uh, give everything to him, right? So bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ by the pulling down of strongholds. By the pulling down. In other words, you got to pull your mind in sometime. You ought to take note of how much time you think about foolishness. Right? And how much time foolishness grips you in the spirit of anger. <laughs> Some of us have been mad for weeks. <laughs> I mean, I'm joking, but it's for real. And, and it's how the enemy snatches us and we be mad. And then, you know, don't let another person be involved. And then you see that person because all them emotions come right back up. This is how he works. He's got you. It's a stronghold. It's gripping your mind strong. It's got you. It's gripping you. It's got you. It's so it bringing down strongholds. You got to have your mind built to the place that you know when something's trying to take you. That's why it says you got to be sober minded. You got to be alert or it's going to take you. It's going to develop a stronghold. Now, now that you got stronghold, this next part, bless me. Uh, because remember I told you, uh, why do liars lie? Because they believe it. Watch this. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination. <laughs> Many a time we try to calculate as to why a thing happened and we start imagining. And it take you to the left. Did they really say? And then you start trying to think in your mind, what was their facial expression? And, and what was they stand? You're doing too much. Look at your neighbor. I'm so for real right now. And tell him, you're doing too much. This, this is where we get off kilter. Uh, this is where, you know, uh, the enemy creeps in uh, because we're doing way too much. Now we're trying to, to revisit the scene in our mind, right? And we're trying to remember what such and such said. And then we take it even a little further as we call somebody that was on the scene. Now we're starting to investigate our imagination. I'm, I'm trying to help you, right? And so we start asking, wasn't you there? Did you hear such and such say? And now you're doing way too much. If some of us have become professional imaginary investigators. Y'all for real. And, and, and we got our minds all twisted. And some of us, can I help you? Some of us are mad at imaginary stuff. I mean, it sounds funny, but it's so for real. That stuff ain't even a reality, and it's got you all messed up. And then we go to people, and we jack up relationships because we say, was I imagining, or when I came into church, did you roll your eyes at me? Now the person thinking you all apprehensive and stuff, you know, you unstable. I was thinking about, you know, taking them to coffee, but, you know, they're a little schizo. You know, they're, you. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell them, you're doing too much. You're doing, you're doing too much. Like a roaring lion, prowling around, looking for someone to devour. He can only devour you if you're off position. If you're, if you're in uh, a vulnerable posture uh, for him to come in, imaginary, wrong thoughts, wrong attitude, that your, 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 your posture is, is vulnerable for the devil to come in. 
uh, be ye angry, sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Do you hear how the scripture is coincide? He's, he's prowling around looking for somebody to devour, right? Looking for someone to devour. And it's telling you, be ye angry, sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Here it is. Neither give place to the devil. Because he's prowling and looking for a place. The place is in your mind when you're in the wrong posture. I ain't going to be able to finish this. Lord, help us. Uh, the Bible says, resist him. Resist him. Uh, how? By standing firm in the faith. Your belief system. Right? Your belief system is what you believe about yourself. Right? I am crucified with Christ. I got to believe the word of God. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But sometimes we live because we respond in self. Because we're not sober and alert and we give place and then he knocks us off kilter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not saying it's always sin. I'm saying sometimes he just knocked your thoughts off. Put you in a vulnerable posture and then take you all the way out. Now you struggling to try to get into prayer, struggling to try to get into worship, struggling to try to get into the word of God because he didn't knock you off kilter. You ought to love the word of God. You, you, the Bible says, blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. You ought to love the word of God. It ought not be a struggle to get into the word of God because it's life. It's life. The Bible says, search the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life. You, you, you got to know. I got to quit. You got to know that, that your hunger for God will be fed if you have a desire for him. But one of his goals is to kill your appetite. Did, did you catch that? Blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, but he's trying to kill your appetite with gossip, trying to kill your appetite, you know, with the wrong posture, trying to kill your appetite with who's trying to get at you, you know, trying to kill your appetite so that you won't, because when you're mad, it's difficult to get into the word. So if he can keep you mad, he can keep you out the word. He can keep you out of prayer. If he can keep you frustrated, you know, you can't even comprehend the words of God, right? That's why prayer is important. That's, that's why David played the harp for Saul, to drive out the evil spirit. That's what worship is about. And you got to get it. I'm through, I promise. Uh, but the Bible, when it talks about the 100th Psalm, uh, it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. He's trying to give us a formula to get out of where we are to get into his presence. But we miss it. <laughs> Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his gates. We're getting closer. Right? Because a gate is on the outside of a house. Right? Then he says, and into his courts with praise. We're getting closer. Right? Be thankful unto him and bless his name. You can see we're, we're getting closer. Uh, this is how we enter into the presence of God so that we can restructure our mind so that we can become spiritually sober so that we can be alert so we don't get taken out so much by the devil I gotta quit come on clap your hands for the Lord on tonight come on you could do better than that if the Lord bless you tonight you ought to open your mouth and give him a praise right here Woo, God. hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's word will, it will feed your soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray uh, that God would continue to uh, give the revelations of his word, his scripture for our lives uh, that we're able um, 
to live a consecrated life. I, I think that's my greatest desire right now uh, is a consecrated life. Uh, it don't mean that I'm just deep and out there. Uh, consecrated life just means it's, it's set apart for God. It's set apart for God. There's some hands on the left left hand side here over here. Devil. Uh, a consecrated life set apart for God. Uh, that there's no light switch, that it doesn't go on and off. <laughs> uh, I don't have time. I, the Bible study's over, but uh, there, there's eclipse power and then there's constant power. Eclipse power is like a light switch uh, that it has to be cut on and off. And then there's constant power where the power is never surged. Uh, and uh, the believer in, in this day and age uh, most of the time has eclipsed power uh, because the power only kicks in when they gather amongst the saints. Uh, if you're going to po post something tonight, uh, post constant power and then just put Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hashtag Holy Ghost, all right? Uh, because eclipse power will get you in trouble. Uh, it's called reprobate. <laughs> I'm through. I promise. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hallelujah. Uh, lock God out your conscience. Uh, reprobate. Temporarily. Lock God out your conscience. Eclipse. Uh, you definitely in, insane when, when God ain't there. Uh, it's an unstable mind. Uh, so while you're preparing your offering, say this with me on tonight. Just say, God, tonight. I desire the mind of Christ. I understand your permissive will has allowed me to do some things. But I desire your perfect will. So have your way in my mind, in my heart, and in my soul. Govern my spirit to be spiritually sober and alert. And after that, I have suffered a while. You will bring me into perfect peace. In Jesus' name.